Welcome back, everybody, to the number one television program in the history of the entire universe. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all three books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today I am going to be reviewing another Stephen Brust novel, and this time we're doing Broke Down Palace. Um, you know, a couple weeks ago, or maybe a week ago, I reviewed the newest Stephen Brust novel, Salmuth, which was book number 19 or something in his Vlad Taltos series. <clears throat> um, this book, Broke Down Palace, is a standalone novel, though it is set in the Vlad Taltos universe. So that's kind of why I have it. I have all the books that are set in the Vlad Taltos universe, including the Phoenix Guards and the um, all the Vlad Taltos books and this. So let's get right to it. This is one of the earlier books that uh, Stephen Brust wrote. It came out in 1986. The last time I read it was in 1986. I remember liking it quite a bit back then, but that was a long, long time ago. So for this reread, I went in practically remembering nothing about the book. I do remember it had Stephen Brust's typical, wonderful writing style, and um, that's about all I remember. I just remember it was written very elegantly. Um, very good fantasy, written very elegantly. What did I think of it the second time? Okay, so let's get started. Let's talk about the covers first. As you can see, I'm holding up two different versions of the book. This is the mass market paperback. This is the trade paperback. I There is no hardcover version of this book. Um, anyway, I've got both copies. Uh, they both have the same illustration on them, and the illustration is done by none other than Alan Lee, the uh, magnificent artist that did all of the Tolkien art, all of the um, Tolkien, J.R.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings covers, and he worked on the Lord of the Rings movies themselves with Peter Jackson. He is one of the main designers of the movie. This is a great... Let's take a look at the pa the, ma uh, the trade paperback first. Quite an elegant cover. The title right in the middle. We've got this gloomy castle with our gloomy fellow down here. And, you know, it wraps around quite nicely with some artwork on the back. And then the mass market paperback is much the same. Same gloomy castle. Same gloomy dude. Broke down palaces in bold purple. I like the I like this one a little better. Just aesthetically, I kind of like this one. Although we do get all this wording up top, um, which we don't on the other one. Um, anyway, and then it wraps around also with some artwork on the back. Anyway, great stuff. Enough about the uh, cover. There's also a map in here which is cool because it is the only map I think in all of the Vlad there's no maps in the Vlad Taltos books there's no maps in the Phoenix Guards I think this is the only map of uh anything in that universe anyway what's this about okay like I said I read it a long time ago didn't remember much other than it was well written I still think it is well written elegantly written beautifully written almost this is kind of like a fairy tale set in like an ancient fairy tale set in the Dragorean universe that um that Stephen Brust has uh, already put together with all sorts of other 20 some odd books this is sort of a fairy tale of that universe it's told in fairy tale style um and whereas the Vlad Taltos books and the Phoenix Guard books they have a real light-hearted, witty, cynical, sarcastic flair to the writing and the dialogue. This book is almost the exact opposite. This book is nothing but gloomy gusses all the way around doing gloomy things and being gloomy. There's little humor about it. There's, um, and the thing is, is Stephen Brust does such great humor. Such great humor. And um, you won't find that here amongst all the magnificent and beautiful writing. Not a lot of humor, but it is a fairy tale. It's it's a, it's light, breezy, and easy to read. There's no rated R stuff in it. Although it is about a palace that's breaking down. And that is kind of the theme of the overall story. I mean, it's 
Not only is the castle crumbling around the characters, but also their lives are crumbling around them. The magic is crumbling, the dragons are crumbling, everything's crumbling. I mean, this is kind of a allegorical fairy tale of um, kingdoms that are on their last legs. And um, what do we do about it? Okay, so there's four brothers. They rule the land of Fenerio in this castle, which is slowly crumbling. King Laszlo, he's, he's um, the oldest, king, well, oldest brother. He's a good man, though perhaps a little bit mad. There's Prince Andor, a clever man, though perhaps a little bit shallow. Then there's Prince Vilmos, a strong man, though perhaps a little bit stupid. And last, but certainly not to be considered least, and probably the main character in the whole book, Prince Miklos, the youngest brother. Um, and he's just a very stubborn guy. And kind of we follow him, I would say he gets about a third to half of the screen time between the, the four brothers that are in this kingdom that's crumbling down. And, um, you know, there's also a goddess, a wizard, a talking stallion, a hungry dragon, and a broke down palace. Thus the name. And we follow these characters as the, it's a fairy tale story. I mean, talking horse. You know, dragons, hungry dragons, um, wizards. I mean, it's it's very light, but not light-hearted. It's just a fairy tale of these guys trying to, um, you know, hold a kingdom together amongst a lot of uh, strife and trouble and magic and things like that. Um, very sad tale. Uh... Like I said, it's humorless, sad, contemplative. It's a piece of literary fantasy, I guess you could say. Um, I give it, whereas I give all the Vlad Teltos books and the Phoenix Guard series, I give all those like 10 out of 10s. I'm going to have to say, this one uh, on a second reading, uh, I kind of, it was kind of like a, like a 7 out of 10. I still read it and I loved, I loved the language and there's some, just some, deep philosophical musings going on by the characters. Um, but it is very, very high fantasy. Um, the other books that Brust writes is very gritty fantasy and very witty. Gritty and witty. This is gloomy and um, elegant. Ele it's elegant gloom, I guess I would say. But I give it about a 7 out of 10. Um, it is part of the uh, university rights, and that's just not a light-hearted tale at all. It's, uh, you know, it is what it is. It's about a broke-down palace. <laughs>